Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, I'm offering Akshan Kifayat Nripu to start this session as he is the host of this session. Akshan Kifayat Nripu, please unmute yourself and uh, start the session. Thank you, Mr. Jahin Kandakar. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever dreamed of traveling to another planet in search of new life forms? Well, that sounds a little impossible. But have you ever looked beyond the surface? If you haven't, then try looking underneath the ocean. Yes, you will see a completely different world under the sea. It will feel like living in two different worlds at the same time. Assalamu alaikum and heartiest greetings to everyone. I'm Akshan Kifan Ripo from Octofin, and I'll be your host for today's session on marine lives. As of today, only 25% of all that lies underneath the majestic oceans have been discovered by us humans. So it is needless to say that the ocean are full of surprises and breathtaking life forms. And so to teach us about the marine lives, Octofin is honored to welcome Dr. Isra E. Abu Elmati. She completed her BSc in zoology from the Faculty of Science at the Suez Canal University in Egypt from the year 2011. From the same institution, she completed her MSc and PhD in marine invertebrates in the years 2016 and 2020, respectively. She was a research assistant at the National Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries, NIOP, from 2012. And in 2016, she started as assistant researcher and is continuing her service there. Also, Dr. Isra is the technical editor at Katrina Journal from 2011 to 2019. Madam has also published three papers in the field of oceanography and fisheries. She is also associated with many volunteer organizations and she currently conducts various seminars and sessions around the globe. She is also member of the Egyptian Society for Environmental Sciences, ESES, and the Environmental Protection and Education Association, EPEA. Ma'am, we're truly honored to have you amongst us today and hope that by the grace of Almighty, you are doing well. So without any more delay, I'm going to hand over the session to ma'am. But before that, I would like to remind our participants to drop their queries in the Zoom chat box and those who are watching the recorded version, please drop your questions in the comment box. We will try to answer your queries in the Facebook group, Exploring the Ocean, Explore the Planet Earth. So please make sure that you are a member of that group. And with this, I would like to sign out and hand over the session to Dr. Isra. Thank you. Thank you for your introduction. The owner is mine. Um, hello, everybody. Here's Isra Abu Mauti. I will talk about life in the ocean. Let's start. Ocean habitat. Um, I just have a question. Okay. The speed of sound in water is about 1,480 meters per second, which is nearly five times faster than the speed of sound in the air. The pressure at the deepest point in the ocean, which is the Mariana Trench, is more than eight tons per square inch, which is equivalent to a person trying to support 50 jumbo jet. The density of seawater become more dense as it become colder right down to its freezing point of a minus 1.9 degrees Celsius, unlike fresh water, which is most dense at four degrees Celsius, well above its freezing point of uh, zero degrees Celsius. The average temperature of the ocean surface is about 17 degrees Celsius. An estimated 50 to 80% of all life on the earth is found under the ocean surface and the ocean contain 99% of the living, sp uh, living space on the planet. Just less than 10% of that space has been unexplored, have been explored by humans. So there's 90% unexplored. 85% of the area and 90% of the volume constitutes the dark, cold environment, which we call the deep sea. 
The ocean is the home to a wide variety of habitat. Currently, scientists have named and successfully classified around 1.5 million species. It is estimated that there are as little as 2 million to as many as 50 million more species that haven't been discovered yet or have been incorrectly classified. Marine organisms range from microscopic like bacteria and algae to the largest animal in the world, the blue whale. The blue whale, we can say that it's as long as two school buses. Okay. Scientists classify organisms according to where they live and how they move into three main categories. Plankton or floaters, nectons or swimmers, pencils or bottom dwellers. The first group, plankton. They are a diverse group of organisms that live in the water column and they can swim against uh, the current. They provide a crucial source of food to many large aquatic organisms, such as fish and whales. The second group, which is nectons or swimmers, they are opposite to plankton. They can swim independent of the water current. Pens in the next slide. This community, which is the pencils, live in the uh, marine sediment from the tide pool along the full shore. Um, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Yes, please continue. Okay, okay. This community live uh, in or near marine sediment from the tide pool along the full shore out to the continental shelf, then down to the apical depths. And we will discuss this zone in the next slide. Okay. Sources of the food in the ocean. What is the source of food in the ocean? If we look for this uh, pyramid, photosynthetic organisms are at the uh, base of the food web in marine ecosystem, just like on land. Here in the photic zone, the first step, tiny photosynthetic uh, phytoplankton are abundant, which provide food for small zooplankton, which are eaten by small carnivore, small fishes, which are eaten by large fishes, like shark, which is in the top. Phytoplankton can live in the aphotic zone of the sea or in the deep sea. However, when the surface dwelling phytoplankton die, they slowly drift down to the bottom of the ocean, and hence it provides energy for deep sea animals, that animals from zooplankton up to whales, eventually sink to the bottom of the ocean. This food fall can be important food for source for all the pensic organisms, which live in the pencils. The rain of dead organic material from the surface is called marine snow. The sea soil, which is a non-moving organisms or animals like coral sponges are filter feeders, which means that they use fan-like structure to capture marine snow from the water. Mobile animals may eat detrites from the sediment. And here it is named as detritivorous or hunt uh, live prey and they are named as predator because food is scarce in the deep sea. Many animals are scavengers that they eat. What's mean by scavengers? They eat anything dead, alive, whatever they found. Hydro, sorry. Hydrothermal vents and methane sips. Sips are, oh my God, are special uh, deep sea habitat where animals use symbiotic bacteria to convert the toxic 
chemical like sulfur and methane into usable energy. This is a way of feeding also in the ocean. Um, unlike most ecosystems on the earth that depend on the sun for energy, no, vents and seeps are chemosynthetic, not photosynthetic, meaning that they get their energy from chemicals, not from the sun. Okay. Here is the ocean zones. We have to understand first, before talking about the deep sea, the ocean zones. Ocean can be differentiated according to two factors, distance from the shore and the depth of the water. These factors affect the amount of neutrons found and the amount of sunlight. So the first zone is the intertidal zone. The intertidal zone. Okay, it is the closest zone to the shore. At high tide, it's covered with water. At low tide, it's exposed to the air. So living organisms in this zone must be adapted to this changing condition and the moving of water in this zone. The second zone is the neuritic zone. Is the neuritic zone. Here is the neuritic zone. It lies over the continental shelf or the subliterate. Um, this zone, uh, the water here is not very deep, but there is a plenty of neutrons and sunlight, so many organisms are found in this zone. The neuritic zone is followed by the oceanic zone, okay? The oceanic zone is the open ocean out past the continental shelf. The water may be very deep, but neutrons may be very scarce. Fewer organisms are found in this zone. The neuritic zone and the oceanic zone together known as the pelagic zone. So the second classification will be according to the depths. This classification was according to the distance from the shore, intertidal zone, neuritic zone, oceanic zone. According to the depths, it will be classified into two main zones, photic zone and the aphotic zone. This is vertically. So photic zone is here and the aphotic zone, okay? The photic zone may be called, known as epipelagic zone. It is the top 200 meters of the water. This zone has enough sunlight, so Organisms here can do photosynthesis. That is the aphotic zone. The aphotic zone starts from 200 meter depths up down, uh, down to the deepest point uh, uh, in the ocean. The water here can't, uh, uh, can't receive sunlight. Living organisms here eat whatever drift from the above or eat each other. That is why there are fewer organisms here in the aphotic zone. Okay. We will talk about the uh, aphotic zone more briefly next slide. But let's first discuss the, list, the last zone, which is the pensic zone. The pensic zone here, it is the ocean floor. The pensic zone is the ocean floor. Okay. It is drift as you go away from the continent. As the water moves deeper, there are fewer organisms in the floor. So, Let's talk in more details about the aphotic zone. The aphotic zone is divided into, first, as you see, the mesopelagic zone. This mesopelagic zone is below the epipelagic zone or the phytic zone. It extends from 200 meters down to 1,000 meters, okay? This zone, this zone. 
It's sometimes known as twilight zone or midwater zone. The light can penetrate the steps, but it is extremely faint. Here, we start to see specific organisms known as twinkling light pyoluminescent animal. So we can see that twinkling light of this pyoluminescent animal starting from the mesoplagic zone. There are a great diversity of uh, strange, bizarre fishes can be found in this zone. Following the um, mesopelagic zone is the second layer, beside pelagic zone, beside pelagic zone, this zone, okay? It is sometimes known as midnight, not midlight, midnight zone or dark zone. It extends from 1,000 meters up to, oh, sorry, down to 4,000 meters. The only visible light here is that produced from the animals itself, and we will discuss it later. The water pressure here is immense. It may reach 5,850 pounds per square inch. In spite of this huge pressure, there are a large number of creatures that can be found and adapt this pressure. For example, a sperm whale can divide into these depths in search for way, food. Most of animals that live at these depths are black or red in color that due to the lack of color. Okay. The beside pelagic zone is followed by apicide zone. Okay. The apicide zone is named apis which mean in gray, it's Greek word and mean no bottom. It extends from 4,000 down to 6,000 meters. The water temperature here nearly freezing, no light at all. Very few creatures can be found at this crashing deep. Most of them hmm, are invertebrates. Oh my God. So, basket stars, tiny squids, can be found at this zone. The last zone is the hydaloplagic zone. This zone, the hydaloplagic zone. The last zone, okay? This layer extends from 6,000 meters to the deepest part of the ocean. This area found in the deep trenches and canines. The deepest point in the ocean is located in Mariana Trench of uh, coast of Japan at 10,911 meters. Okay. Let's hear this uh, video together. It will discuss the oceanic zone. The depth of the ocean is classified into five different zones, which is the epipelagic zone, mesopelagic zone, bathypelagic zone, abyssopelagic zone, and hidalpelagic zone. They are classified according to the amount of sunlight, depths it occupies, and the degree of hydrostatic pressure found there. The deeper we go, the more water pressure will build up over the top of us. The pressure of the weight of the overlying water is the hydrostatic pressure at that depth. The surface layer of the ocean is known as the epipelagic zone, and extends from the surface to 200 meters. It is also known as the sunlight zone because this is where most of the visible light exists. With the light comes heat. This heat is responsible for the wide range of temperatures that occur in this zone. Pressure is also minimal and increases with depth. Most oceanic life and human activities like leisure, fishing, and sea transport occur in the epipelagic zone. The coral reefs can be found in the layer, and the photosynthesis process occurs here. Below the epipelagic zone is the mesopelagic zone, extending from 200 meters to 1,000 meters. The mesopelagic zone is sometimes referred to as the twilight zone or the midwater zone. The light that penetrates to this depth is extremely faint. It is in this zone that we begin to see the twinkling lights of bioluminescent creatures. A great diversity of strange and bizarre fishes can be found here. This is my favorite zone as the creatures in this zone lead me to start learning more about marine life. The next layer is called the bathypelagic zone. It is sometimes referred to as the midnight zone or the dark zone. This zone extends from 1,000 meters down to 4,000 meters. 
Here the only visible light is that produced by the creatures themselves. The water pressure at this depth is immense, reaching 5,850 pounds per square inch. In spite of the pressure, a surprisingly large number of creatures can be found here. Sperm whales can dive down to this level in search of food. Most of the animals that live at these depths are black or red in color due to the lack of light. The next layer is called the abyssopelagic zone, also known as the abyssal zone or simply as the abyss. It extends from 4,000 meters to 6,000 meters. The name comes from a Greek word meaning no bottom. The water temperature is near freezing, and there is no light at all. Very few creatures can be found at these crushing depths. Most of these are invertebrates such as basket stars and tiny squids. Three quarters of the ocean floor lies within this zone. The deepest fish ever discovered was found in the Puerto Rico Trench at a depth of 8,372 meters. Beyond the abyssopelagic zone lies the forbidding hidalpelagic zone. This layer extends from 6,000 meters to the bottom of the deepest parts of the ocean. These areas are mostly found in deep water trenches and canyons. The deepest point in the ocean is located in the Mariana Trench off the coast of Japan, at 10,911 meters. The temperature of the water is just above freezing, and the pressure is an incredible 8 tons per square inch. In spite of the pressure and temperature, life can still be found here. Invertebrates such as starfish and tube worms can thrive But these the fish don't need additional muscle or meat, but just their vital organ to survive. The depth of the ocean is so now we all know the ocean of uh, the, uh, the ocean zones. Each zone has a different mix of species. These species adapted to the zone specific environmental condition. Uh, the light level, the pressure, the temperature, and the community. Most are familiar with the surface uh, layer, which extend up to uh, 20 meter, the photic zone, which I mentioned before, as it receives most of the sunlight, allowing photosynthetic organisms like phytoplankton to convert sunlight to energy. It is home, this zone, which is a photic zone, is home for bats of dolphin, school of fishes, and uh, shoals of sharks, Scientists refer to this highly productive zone as I mentioned before, the epiplagic zone. But the majority of space in the ocean is a dark world. About three fourths of this area covered of the area covered by ocean is deep, permanently dark and cold. This is what's called deep sea. Deep sea creature refer to the organisms which live below the photic zone, starting from 20 meter the and down below the photic zone of the ocean. So most of these creatures have to depend on food floating down from the above or eat each other. This creature adapted to survive, as I mentioned before, extremely harsh condition such as hundreds of pounds of pressure, a small amount of oxygen, very little food, no sunlight, and constant extreme cold, so they are adapted to this high pressure, lack of light, and other factor, as for example, the water is, a temperature is between three to 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, there is low oxygen level. Due to the depth, the pressure is between 20 to 1,000 pounds. So let's talk about the common adaptation of these creatures or these animals which live in these harsh conditions. First of all, most have enlarged and specialized eyes. For example, many of them have low light sensitive rod cell to detect what little light there is. But color is blind. 
just detect the light. For example, minute amount of light from the surface in the, in the mesopelagic zone, or light from bioluminescence in the pisilage zone. These road cells can help these organisms to detect this light, little light. Um, another adaptation is the presence of telescope eyes. What is the telescope eyes? Okay, we can see this picture below. Gigantura species, it is a species of fish, I have telescope eyes to give better pie nuclear vision for hunting. Uh, the third adaptation may be upward pointing eyes, like this fish, looking towards the surface to see the silhouette of fish swimming above Again, this is a faint light of the surface. Okay. This was adaptation in the eye. Another adaptation to hide in the dark. <laughs> we use light to see. Other creatures underwater use light to disappear. How? The first example is transparency, where but light there is passes through these organisms make them invisible. They are transparent. Let's see this video together. It's very amazing. The best disguise is transparency. Like this squid with a delicate glass-like body. Almost nine centimeters long, this amphipod is a giant of its kind. It's completely transparent, apart from its two enormous eyes and central nervous system. Another peculiar crustacean lives like a hermit within the stolen body of a jellyfish. This shell also houses her offspring. Her habit of pushing this protective shell around has led okay. to the nickname. So the transparency of these animals uh, makes them invisible. The best Another adaptation is reflective. There is mirror-like scales that reflect to what light, what light there is. So the fish matches with the background, no silhouette. Um, the third adaptation is photophores. What's the photophores? They are light emitting organs on the ventral side. Faintly lights their underside. So silhouette doesn't stand out. Um, the last adaptation I will talk about uh, for hidden is the red pigments. Red light is the first to disappear. So red pigmented organisms appear black. This is camouflage in the deep ocean. Let's see this camouflage in this amazing video. Cuttlefish, octopuses, and squid have an almost otherworldly ability to control their appearance. Octopuses and squid have an almost otherworldly ability to control their appearance. What makes it possible are these spots. They're called these chromatophores. Are the They're like chromatophores. tiny water balloons filled with colored pigment. When the balloons expand, you see more pigment, more color. When they contract, the color shrinks to a tiny dot. The overall effect can be really dramatic, and for good reason. These animals don't have protective external shells. They're unarmored, naked, and they aren't great swimmers either. Camouflage is their best defense. They have to be good at it. Octopuses can change their body position and the pattern on their skin to match rock or coral. 
Octopuses and cuttlefish can even change the texture of their skin to throw off predators, become bumpier and more rock-like. But squid often live in the open ocean. How do you blend in when there's nothing except water to blend into? They do it by changing the way light bounces off their skin. They can actually adjust how iridescent their skin is using light reflecting cells called iridophores. They can mimic the way sunlight filters down from the surface, hide in plain sight. Okay, another adaptation is the bioluminescence. What is the bioluminescence? Light emitting organ have a variety of uses. Head lights may be found in the head of the fish, producing light to see prey. And will we see another amazing video uh, discuss this point? Larrys to attract prey, mate attraction, communication, especially in squids, decoy and the smoke screens. For example, squid, squirt, squirt, luminous ink to startle predators and hide their escape. So let's see this video together. in the deep, how creature adapt? Someone raised his hand, okay. Um. Well, uh, well, ma'am, uh, there is no need to answer this question uh, now. We'll have a question answering session at the last of our session. Okay. You can continue. Okay. Dining is the deep. How can you should adapt uh, for dining in the deep? First of all, I will talk about large teeth and distended jaw, as this picture below. These large teeth and distended uh, jaws allow them to capture and killing prey uh, of much larger than possible. So there are more opportun opportunities to uh, uh, capture its prey. Let's enlarge the screen. Okay. The second adaptation is distended stomach. As we see this uh, this fish, uh, it is gullible fish. Uh, it has distentable stomach, so it digests prey, prey, which is much larger than normal possible over a long period of time. Uh, the last adaptation I will uh, discuss is uh, this animal is characterized by low metabolic rate. Therefore, little energy is required to keep the organisms functioning, so less food is needed. Thus, is adaptation to the scarce food. Okay, let's see animal in the zone adapt ad how to adapt. So we will discuss or dive more deeply. If you dive below the epiplagic zone, you will enter, as we mentioned, the mesoplagic zone, which is known as twilight zone and receive filtered sunlight no photosynthetic organisms to survive. How animal adapt in this zone, in the mesoplastic zone? Many, how we can apply 
the previously discussed adaptation in each zone. Many animals have adapted to near darkness with large eyes, as we said before. And another mechanism known as counter illumination. For example, this mechanism found in midwater squid. What is the counter illumination? Glowing photophores are visible on this midwater squid. View it from the pillow at low light level. We think of light, as I said before, as a way to see in the dark, but these species use light to hide them. This adaptation is called counter illumination. See from the pillow, an animal might stand out as a dark shape against the brighter water above. By glowing it on its underside, it can be blended. This uh, photo below is for the midwater squid. Let's see an amazing video for this to imagine it. This squid spends its nights hunting and hiding from predators. And it has a fantastic trick. It can hide its own shadow. This squid spends its nights hunting and hiding from predators. And it has a fantastic trick. It can hide its own shadow. When moonlight filters through the water, it outlines the squid. In response, the squid lights up. It matches the moonlight, creating a subtle glow that blots out its silhouette. And that's called counter illumination. It's a brilliant disguise, an advantage that lets the squid hunt unnoticed. Even though they look like cute little squid, and they are cute, they're voracious predators. Oh yeah. They love shrimp. And it is quite terrifying. The squid will come and, and hover behind the shrimp. The shrimp doesn't even know it's there. And then, bam, and start chomping on it. But the squid can't hide its shadow by itself. The silhouette erasing glow comes from another creature entirely. So this mechanism comes from another creature. What is it? Deep inside the squid is a special light organ that houses a single species of bacteria, the light-producing microbe, so Vibrio this fish bacteria is responsible for this mechanism in the squid. Okay. This was the, the animal in mesopelagic zone. Beginning with the beside, beside pelagic zone, the ocean, as we said before, is completely void of light. No sunlight, no moon, no stars, no light here. The water temperature is nearly freezing. So what animal can do, they have to adapt. How? With their own bioluminescent light. And if they haven't lost their eyes, there is a highly light sensitive eyes to see the light produced by other animals if they haven't biomicent mechanism. Creatures in this zone must live with minimal food, so have slow metabolism. And they are also characterized by squishy bodies, slim skin. Let's see some example. The first one is a black hackfish. This photo, okay? This is the angular fish. If we look, it has very uh, big uh, and jaw, extended uh, and uh, jaw and mouth. Uh, this is the, sorry, this is the viper fish. Here is the angular fish. If we see its stomach, as we mentioned before, and the sleeper shark are common as this zoo. While something like gulper ear with its massive expandable <laughs> gullet is rare, and amazingly sight and could almost be mistaken by a line of its own. Vampire squid and Dumbo octopus are also ventured to these dips. Okay, let's see this video together. The 
Even in the dark zone, there is some light. light in the dark. Turn off the submersible headlights and you see a pyrotechnic display outside. These lights are created by animals. This is bioluminescence. Bio this is the gulfers. A deep sea anglerfish flashes in the darkness. Yeah. The light is generated by bacteria that live permanently inside the lure, which attracts prey to these murderous teeth. So, also bacteria is responsible for this mechanism. There are all sorts of lures out in the darkness. Come into my mouth, little fish. Okay. In the pastel zone, Animals that can withstand the pressure in the pricing zone, which can, this pressure can reach up to 600 times what is experienced at the sea level. Um, must be, these animals must be highly specialized to this uh, uh, level of pressure. For example, tri fish are an oddity that can be seen in this zone. This is the tri fish. This photo for tri fish. okay often found resting on sea floor, tribal fish can bump, have this technique, can bump fluid into their elongated fins to make them like rigid slits, or as na its name uh, imply, make them like tripod. And do three, three. tripods, sometimes few feet high, okay? List. See the tripod fish in the deep ocean together. The tripod fish lives in the cold deep ocean where there is little light and the pressure is extreme. They are found in the temperate and tropical areas of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian oceans. They are typically spotted between 3,000 and 15,400 feet deep. Their eyes are significantly reduced due to their dark environment. These fish spend most of their lives perched on the ocean floor. With the help of three elongated projections from their modified fins, some tripod fish can prop themselves up three feet above the seafloor. This enables them to hunt without using too much energy. There is not much of a current close to the sea floor. By propping themselves up, they are able to face the direction of water movement and wait for food like shrimp to drift by. When they do swim, their long modified fins float underneath them. The pectoral fins behind their head act like antennae, sensing the vibrations of swimming prey. The fins also help direct food towards their mouth. Tripod fish are simultaneous hermaphrodites. This means that they possess both male and female reproductive organs. If they can't find a mate, they can fertilize their own eggs by releasing both eggs and sperm. Most of organisms here uh, in the deep sea are, uh, uh, or at this depth are hermaphrodite to uh, adapt, not searching for uh, the mate like this tribe of fish, okay. Uh, also, uh, red tail fish, this photo, octopuses, sea camper, are well adapted to this intense pressure. Okay, the last zone and animal in the, of this zone is the hadalplagic zone. It is the very deepest part of the ocean that include, as I mentioned, the trench and the canal. It extends from 6,000 meters to the very bottom of the Mariana Trench um, at 10,994 uh, meters. Very little is known about the creatures that live at such depths. But in 2018, Scientists officially describe a snail fish at 
27,000 feet below sea level, the deepest level in fish ever found here. Okay, let's see this video together. At 7,000 meters deep in Mariana Trench, uh, the Mariana snailfish, Pseudoliparis sweary, feed on antipodes. This is the deepest known species of fish. Okay. Thank you. Here is, I have finished my lecture. Thank you for your listening. Well, uh, thank you, ma'am. Now we are going to the next session of uh, question analysis session. Well, I uh, heard the host is Tajin Khandakar. I'm okay. offering Tajin to start this session. Please, Tajin. Hello, Octophils. I'm starting today's session wishing everyone well. I hope that we have learned the purpose of gaining knowledge about the ocean that we have gathered here today. I hope I will learn more in the future and work from my own place to make the world transparent and move forward with the goal of bringing a transparent world. Wishing everyone a beautiful evening. Many thanks and gratitude at the outset to our respected lecturer, Isra Abu Ilmati, for giving us the opportunity to gain knowledge about the ocean through such an informative session. Welcome all of you to the question answer analysis assessment. Here I'm with you, Tazin Kondukar from Octofin and stay tuned. In this session, we have received many questions from our participants. So yeah. In continuation of this session, we got the first question from our participant, uh, MD Tanvir Hussain. His question is, what is filter feeder? Please, ma'am. Filter feeder? They ask about the meaning of filter feeder? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, filter feeder means they filtrate seawater um, with uh, some specific uh, mechanism. Uh, I see, uh, I said here a fan like structure. This is a fan like structure in their uh, mouse. Uh, so they filtrate water to take phytoplankton and get rid of uh, excess water that uh, they don't need. This uh, very common feature, uh, especially in bivalve. Thank you, ma'am. The second question is from Nazmul Haq Shaikat. His question is, is there any phytoplankton that lives in the bottom of the sea or ocean? If any, please tell me a species name. Okay, I said that uh, phytoplankton uh, are photosynthetic organisms. So they are found at the first uh, zone which is the photic zone, which receives sunlight, so they can um, uh, use sunlight to produce energy through photosensors. So they are not found in the deeps of the ocean. Thank you, ma'am. The third question is from Rashidul Islam. Is the same temperature in oceanic zone and a photic zone or every zone? Um, Sorry, I um, I understood. Uh, I think I don't get the question well. He asked about variation in temperature. Okay, ma'am. I'm repeating the question. Okay. Is the same temperature in oceanic zone and aphotic zone or every zone? The same yes, temperature uh, in. He's asking about the temperature. If the temperature is different or the same. No, it's different. It's, uh, I said that the variation in the zone is according to the penetration of sunlight. A photic doesn't receive sunlight, so the temperature as we move 
uh, downward as we get colder temperature. Thank you, ma'am. The fourth question is from Nayan Jyoti Roy Kanok. How animals survive where water temperature is near freeze? Uh, adaptation to temperature, um, they have um, specialized skin organ. Uh, I said uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the previous slide, in a specific video that uh, animal uh, lost um, even muscle. Some uh, animal in the deeps become just a skeleton, just a skeleton. They didn't need the uh, flesh or uh, skin on it. Thank you, ma'am. The fifth question is from Shukuma Chandradash. His question is, what are the bizarre animals? These are mean strange animals. Well, uh, deep sea animals are actually bizarre. Yeah. Uh, and the last, last question is from Nayan Jyoti Roy. His question is, how deep sea animals maintain bi um, buoyancy? Uh, how is they made? The buoyancy, the buoyancy. As a, as a distended... Um, uh, buoyancy means the standard stomach or, or what? I can't uh, understand the question. Well, uh, please uh, repeat the question, Tajin. Please repeat the question. I I can I can hear the question actually. Mm -hmm. I'll you well, uh, the question is actually how deep uh, deep water uh, animals uh, maintain the buoyancy, how they can uh, float, maintain the floating of their uh, body actually. How they float? Yes, yes, yes. how they float and uh, how uh, don't they sink or uh, go uh -huh. upwards. It's actually the buoyancy. I said about the distended stomach, which makes the, the, this buoyancy, if, uh, if I get the question. Uh, as we uh, move um, deeper, uh, most of creatures are um, flat, uh, flattered or, uh, or um, pencils. I said that swimmer are at lower uh, depths. Well, uh, as uh, he's asking, because uh, he thought that uh, there is no, uh, uh, airbag in uh, them, airbag uh, in this fish, so how they airbag. can uh, how they can uh, live there and uh, feel them uh, maintain their buoyancy. And uh, yes, uh, what you have uh, answered is actually right. Uh, they have a large uh, belly or uh, something, stomach, uh, which they get the air and uh, they can uh, survive there. Okay. Well. Well, uh, what is the next question? Savayan Bushra, uh, her question is, what types of food or dietary system the deep sea animals do live on? As they live on feeding each other or the uh, food drift or snow uh, that uh, fell from the upper layers, as I said. And they don't depend on, they have low metabolic rate, so they don't depend on too much food. They need little food than the upper uh, animals. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next question is from Nayan Jyoti Rai Kanok. Uh, his question is, what is the difference between filter feeder and grazer? Okay. Uh, filter feeder, as I said, it intakes the water and get rid of the, take the microorganisms they need and get rid of uh, the other. As uh, this, for example, like bivalves, okay? But grazer uh, are um, um, animals which feed on um, uh, plants of the sea, like sea grasses. Uh, they must have a specialized uh, organ in its teeth, like um, sea urchins. Sea urchin is a good example for major grazers. Uh, they are herbivorous organisms that can graze the uh, substrate. 
and this is a um, double-edged weapon. It uh, feed on um, algae, uh, so the, um, this algae uh, prevent the penetration of sunlight to the corals, so they are a beneficial value. But they uh, decrease the amount of algae in the space, which provide uh, photosynthetic life. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Ma'am, due to time constraint, we have to end today's session here. I want to convey more sincerely that due to time constraint, it is not possible to answer all your questions here. No reason to worry about that participant. This recorded lecture will be uploaded in our Facebook group, which is made for participants and you all can comment there. A big gratitude and respect for our honorable lecturer. Please let us know how much you enjoyed our session. Hopefully, I will not back down from my role in making life and the world healthier by obeying awareness. Let us let our watchword be from today, exploring ocean, explore the planet Earth. Stay safe, stay healthy, wish you luck. Thank you so much. Thanks to all of you. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Well, thank you, ma'am, for your uh, lively and informative se session. And uh, thanks to all. At last, I'm saying good morning, good night, good evening, and good noon to all. And uh, stay safe, stay home. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.